Hey guys, welcome to game three between Dreamer and Zeddy. Upper right hand corner, we have Dreamer starting as the green Protoss. Bottom left hand corner, we have Zeddy starting as the, this is like the very dark blue Zerg, which is I guess appropriate because he is dominating thus far. This is a two player map, which changes things quite a bit on Eclipse. Thus far, Zeddy has shown that his early game busts cannot be stopped. Dreamer, though keep in mind, chose his name because sometimes he does have a little bit of a sleepy start. And we've seen that in prior matches where I believe it was in the round of eight as well as the semifinal. He ended up dropping games early and then coming back to just sweep from that point on effectively. Putting a pylon on his front, scouting immediately after pylon. Likes having that probe in the base to provide additional harassment. Seeing a spawning pool behind the lines on 9. And we'll see if Zeddy continues with more of the same. Which is that active harassment somehow in the midst of all of those zerglings and everything else. He's still got drones out. Usually you'll see zerg players, they try to do that and they just end up stifling their economy, and they don't get the drones, the drone saturation they need really to carry them uh, into the mid game. Dreamer, seeing the main, seeing that the spawning pool is down, backing up with this probe, wants to, again, provide some delay, also try to blockade, forge first for Dreamer, playing a little bit more precautiously this time. I would not be shocked if he drops two cannons early. Going for the spawning pool first, Delays kind of that three hatch 973 a bit. Initial zergling eggs being produced, but not so much that it's insane. Is he going to go forge first or nexus first? This is very greedy. This is very greedy on Dreamer's part. Dreamer is just hoping this, and this is four zerglings. This might be a quick one, ladies and gentlemen. So let's see if they go after this probe or not. It looks like several of the Zerglings pushing off. They're not even bothering with the probe. One cannon warping in. Probes are going to have to pull off the line to provide some defense here. This cannon's starting to warp in. I like this play from Zeddy. He's like, forget dealing with that probe. I'm just going to flood those Zerglings forward and go ahead and take my second base at that 9 o'clock location. Gateway in front. Cannon has warped in. Probes blockading. But with... It looks like it's going to pay off, though. The Zergling's trying to find a gap, getting repelled, not quite able to micro through. Still trying to sneak through. Some nice defense from these probes. Loses two probes, but the Zerglings, all but one Zergling, are killed. And those probes are going to hunt down that last one. Wow! I, I'm going to say that that was stupendous. It is rare to go Nexus first, have the cannon... Plop down after this, off, after a 9-pool opening, and be able to defend it. That was incredible. Well played by Dreamer. Putting on a clinic on the front. We do have that natural expansion being taken here by Zeddy. Extractor warping in. He doesn't have map control, which is going to allow this probe to sneak through. He lost all of those Zerglings. And that's going to allow additional scouting information for Dreamer as well. Moving the Zealot forward. Maybe trying to force some additional probes to be... This is interesting. Building the, the cybernetic score along that natural expansion. Maybe he wants to hide a bit of his tech as well. The simulator... Not the simulator. The extractor up. The probe trying to do a little bit of harassment in that probe line. The zelt making its way across. The, zelt, the zerglings trying to create a little bit of a blockade. We already have two drones here. Starting their mining. This is going to slow down a potential all-in even longer. Four Zerglings there to greet that Zealot. If that probe can come back and engage this attack, that might be advantageous. But it looks like that Zealot's just going to go ahead and try to wander up to this 9 o'clock base spot where that additional hatchery is. Maybe. Never mind. He's just going to try to find a pocket, perhaps, to engage these Zerglings. He's instead wandering all over the map and drawing these Zerglings all the way away. Two more Zerglings have been produced right there. Just trying to be annoying. Now engaging, trying to stutter step here. Some nice micro only manages to get two, two, and I'll call that a half. Two and a half Zerglings. Another Zealot making his way across. 
So Dreamer this time putting on the pressure. Four Zerglings now at the natural expansion. We're almost seeing a, maybe an inversion here. Zeddy trying to sneak drones where he can. The probe making its way back across gets very quickly taken out. The Overlord over that natural expansion is going to see that Stargate warping in. And we are seeing a layer this time. And this is what I was talking about. We, we've seen the flexibility of Zeddy thus far to have multiple builds. This is where Dreamer really... Oh, let's see if he can get an Overlord, or not an Overlord, that Zealot, someplace where he can provide some scouting information. Building a Dragoon, which actually slows a lot of this tech down as well. It's going to sneak in, be able to get an Overlord kill, which is going to put Zeddy in the red. And on top of that, the Zealot has managed to get a kill at that 9 o'clock base. Additional hatchery being planted there. So it looks like Zeddy was planning going for more of that 4 hatch, potential 5 hatch, uh, Spire first to get... Just some initial scourge, but it does open up that threat. Zealot going, getting uh, flushed out by these Zerglings. Nice micro though, getting as many Zergling kills as possible. So usually you stick on four hatches a little bit longer until you get that Hydralis done down. But what this does do is this gives Dreamer a bit of a reprieve to go ahead and get his tech up. Level one weapons upgrading the Corsair moving out. Citadel of Adun in that backfield. Usually. What follows this is around an 11-minute Zealot timing attack. We'll see what he opts for. There is the fifth hatchery following. I feel like Dreamer's done a fantastic job of doing all sorts of harassment thus far. This Corsair should be able to get another Overlord kill before there are defensive Scourge anywhere. And also seeing this additional hatchery lets him know that even though, even though he will see Scourge out in the air, that it is more of a long-term economic build. Although Zerg is very flexible, can switch back. Hydral's Den now at the natural expansion. This kill is going to go ahead and put Zeddy again in the red, and he's actually going to plop down the fifth hatchery at that third base, providing a little bit of a Sim City here. And actually, is he going to get a bonus overlord? Might even get an additional overlord on top of everything else. Incredible. I don't see any Scourge yet. He couldn't produce Scourge because he was supply blocked, right? So some Scourge from the Natural Expansion make their way across, but this was, these Corsair, even if this Corsair dies, looks like he's going to have to back off. Ooh. Takes both hits, but really paid for itself thus far. Some Zerglings towards the front. Level 1 weapons about halfway finished. Some High Templar already on the way, and a Dark Templar also being filled in. Some cannons. Prevent, uh, I like that Dreamer's on top of it, putting those cannons inside of his base just in case there was a Mutalisk follow-up. The Scourge kind of doing for Zerg now what they typically do for Protoss comparatively. Going ahead and scouting and making and seeing if there's an opportunity, more or less, to transition into Mutalisks and maybe go for an attack there. The Dark Templar is now making its way across. There's an Overlord overhead at the 9 o'clock base, Overlord overhead at the Natural Expansion, and Sutton Colonies to provide some defense there. But the Zerglings are getting taken out over that front. Some Scourge taking some hits. Not too big a deal, but might open something up. Phenomenized Carapace being upgraded at the lair to go ahead and allow those Hydralisks to have that Overlord Escort as that Dark Templar is floating out ahead. And right now I like the Dark Templar just because that single Dark Templar provides a degree of map control for Dreamer. Forces Zeddy to play a little bit more defensively. I think Zeddy was planning that in the probe freak, doing a little probe dance right there. But in the interim, another Forge being planted. <clears throat> so Dreamer looking for double upgrades and adding additional gateways. So definitely going to go for a ground and pound follow-up. Zeddy establishing three gas. So he wants to go ahead and play defensive shell. Let me go ahead and push my tech to hive tech. Get all of those upgrades. Maybe get to lurker tech. Maybe get to uh, spire, cracklings, that sort of action. Double evolution chamber for him as well. And the Hydralisk is starting to move out across the map. Looking for an Overlord to be here alongside. I think I might have missed that Dark Templar getting taken out someplace out on the front. Maybe at the 9 o'clock base. <clears throat> without <laughs> without much fanfare. Hydralis is pushing up in front of Zeddy's base. Or sorry, in front of Dreamer's base. Psystorm is just now being upgraded. The Zelts do have leg speed. One cannon down. And I take it back. Ignore this. Is there going to be cancellation on that weapons one? There's enough Hydralisks with range and everything else. I thought Psystorm was going to be in place, but instead, it is a handful of Zelts that do not have level one weapons. Or sorry, they do have level one weapons to try to provide a defense against these Hydralisks. Some cannons are there at the main. They're trying to back up. 
a lot of blockades. Some high tempo are being picked off. And there's GG from Dreamer out of nowhere. That timing was perfect. Fooled me too. Great play from Zeddy. Okay. Everything. So he got me too. Everything looks like that was Zeddy setting up to go for a long-term game. Instead, Zeddy threw out two rounds of Hydralisks, caught Dreamer with his pants down. Oftentimes, you will have Psystorm at that stage, but he it looks like he overbuilt High Templar and perhaps missed Psystorm, and there was only one cannon on the front. He was looking to bait out the Psystorm, but when the High Templar were not dropping the Storm, Zeddy pressed the advantage. Great play. 3-0 thus far, and now Dreamer is on the verge of elimination. So we are going to move on to Shakura's Plateau, a more macro-oriented map, but Dreamer is in trouble. And honestly, I felt like this was his best showing. One huge critical mistake can cost you the finals. I'm hoping Dreamer will wake up and we'll have a series after this. But thus far, Zeddy just dominating. Thanks for listening.